Right now, it is an absolutely gorgeous day, but later tonight, we are expecting five to seven inches of snow. One of the reasons we started this project was we saw a weather window. We had a few little sunny days in the forecast. We haven't had those in a really long time. We did not know it was gonna get this cold and neither did the forecasters. So we're under the gun to get this done before we get another round of snow tonight. We're excited for the snow um, and we're about halfway through the unit that we need to finish this project. Yesterday we hammered out I think 77 boards. Not a bad day of production considering we had an appointment in the morning and then we had to drop the other load off at the kiln to be dried and to get that process started. If you've been following us on this journey or on this project, you know that Alyssa has been doing the majority, in fact all, of the sawmilling and she's doing a great job. She's learning a lot, kind of figuring out how to be more efficient and she's learning to look at each board and figure out, can she get one board, two boards, four boards, and sometimes six boards. It's a little bit of thinking and it takes some, some time to figure out how to be the most efficient. Sometimes you're better off just working through one board at a time and every once in a while you can grab two boards, throw them on there and get twice as much wood for the same amount of work. When we started this project, we had a lot of random length and random thickness lumber over here. We've gone through all of that and harvested anything that was usable. Then we started actually, let's see, yeah, we started right here. Again, we had all this random length, random dimension lumber. And we got through all that and salvaged anything we could. And then we started with anything that we could use that maybe had the least amount of waste. So we burned through the stack that we had here. Doing fantastic. Our goal was to save as much of this long, beautiful lumber in case we don't need it. That way, we've still got something here that we could turn into really valuable boards. Say, a two by 10 or two by 12, 27 feet long. On a project like this, waste can start to kind of play with your mind. The reason we saved all these boards in the beginning was they were overrun when we milled our timber frame. We want to make the most use of them, but we didn't make these boards. They were a byproduct. All of that firewood, which is somewhere around 15 cords of firewood, is also a byproduct. It's not going to waste either. It'll heat our home and probably other people's homes for a couple, three years, I would imagine. So we're trying to be efficient with these boards and trying not to waste if we can, but waste is inevitable. This is all the waste that we've generated so far, but I wouldn't say that it's really waste. The very last resort would be to turn this into hot tub fuel. But one thing we actually still need is furring strips for our cold roof. And a lot of this stuff looks like it would make perfect furring strips. So no need to run out and buy that lumber. If we can stack this stuff completely the full width of the sawmill, we can make a lot of furring strips really quick. We've generated some slabs like these and we're going to save them because most of them are big enough for things like stair treads or even shelving. Anytime Alyssa sees a board that she thinks might be able to be used for dimensional lumber, she sets it over here. There's not a ton of it, but at least it's something that we could use for an odds and end project, like if you needed to make a leg or a brace or something like that. We've got just a few boards laying around. Something we learned from reclaimed materials, which we did when we first moved to our property, was that the temptation to have a ton of, of a, a boneyard, a ton of just materials laying around is really strong. And it, it makes you feel comfortable. I don't even know why. You just feel good because you have all this material. So if you wanted to build something, you could. The reality of that is that you have a ton of random, non-uniform materials that end up just taking up space because every time you go to the boneyard, you dig, 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 to try to find a couple of pieces that are somewhat similar that you can use for this project. And in the end, you waste a tremendous amount of time. That's not a criticism, that's just a reality. So we did use the vast majority of our reclaimed materials for a lot of different projects, and we're glad we did that. But we're kind of trying to take that lesson of wasted time and apply it here. If we can't stack and sticker, Ran, or uniform widths, uniform thicknesses and stuff so that when you need to do a project, you can come out here, get the materials that you need, then really it's better off being firewood. When we built the deck for our hot tub, we used every last snivel of the, the planks or slabs that we created. And we did that by chalk lining right on the edge of the bark and then using a skill saw to trim that and then a table saw 
to make the other side square. That worked out good because we literally needed every last quarter inch of wood we created to get our deck done. In this situation, we're actually having a local mill plain, dry, and shape this lumber. And it would work to our disadvantage if we handed them a bunch of random widths. It would increase the cost exponentially and it wouldn't really benefit us in the house. We talked about it, I think Alyssa might have shared it in one of the first videos on this project, that we want things to look somewhat uniform. When you create uniformity, you create waste. And that's just a reality of this. The good news about a lot of wood products like this, there's always a use for them, whether it's firewood, wood chips, or other uses. When we milled these boards with the timber frame, we were not trying to create anything, we were trying to salvage or save lumber. So these boards are flat sawn. Just wherever the log was, we took an inch and a half or whatever off of that log. For flooring and finish work, these really aren't desirable boards. We could use them and do things with them, but we'd really rather focus on getting um, some, some straight grain or something like that. Either quarter sawn, rift sawn, something like that, where the, the grain is more vertical and it's going to make it more stable dimensionally. We thought maybe we would use it for a barn or a tractor shed or something like that, which was a good idea, but right now, this is what's in front of us, and so we might as well maximize it. We originally only put the sawmill here because we didn't really have anywhere else to put it. And logistically, it made sense because the log truck that brought the logs could pull in, place the logs here, and then we could maneuver our backhoe, and then we could lift the logs onto the mill using the backhoe. But in the long run, we actually don't want the mill to stay here. We'd like to put it on its trailer and make it portable so that we can actually get more use out of it. So we'll be looking for projects in the next few weeks to try to get all this wood burnt up, get a lot of these logs turned into something useful, get all this area cleared out so we can start using it again. So when we took the last load to the kiln, we took him 107 boards. We calculated that we need 212, but we don't want to cut it that close. So I think we should take him 230. I agree. So 230 boards would put us at 17 and a half rows on here. So where we're at right now is we're at, we need to finish row 14, two, two boards to go. So that means that we need three and a half more rows. How's sawmilling going today? I feel like we're flying. I feel like we're flying too. Yeah. Yep. Crazy production. One of those boards I handed you, you got like eight boards out of it, didn't you? You handed me four boards and I got eight. <laughs> Some of them are close, but I'm getting pretty dialed. Ooh. Pretty predictable. It helps having like a huge deck of boards. Yeah, getting ahead of you, which that I knew I could helps. do. Right, do you think we'll beat London Fog 30 today? I think we will. We got three rows to go, three the and a half saw rows. Mill, I guess all the guys leave at 3.30. Oh, right. We have a meeting with our tax guy at three. Ah. Taxes. Ah. Deadlines, taxes. Ah. So I think we can deliver the load, potentially restack the other boards. Oh, right, we have to re-sticker. I don't think we have to do it today. We could probably do it tomorrow. Right, we could do that anytime, technically, because they're not going to put it in the good. cone right away. And then we'll be home for London Fog 30. Oh, ho, 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 in our comfy clothes. So the glaring mistake that we made on the last unit, these stickers were in about six inches. And as the boards dry, any checking that exists in the end of the boards is going to run up the end of the board, obviously eating up 
uh, quality wood. This unit we're doing a much better job of stacking right on the end within about an inch or so of the end of the unit on both sides. And the other unit we mixed a lot of our 10 foot in with our 9 foot. And on this unit we're actually stacking all the 10 foot together and then we're working on 9 foot stuff. So this 10 foot is going to take the kiln a lot better than the stuff we stacked in the other unit because a lot of that was just sticking out and it wasn't stickered at all so it's really vulnerable. So checking cracks like this one are really going to exaggerate in the kiln. We may even lose over a foot of this board once it's dried. That's okay, we'll cut it down to a nine foot. It'll all work out. Because of the time crunch, we asked the mill owner if we could just re-sticker that stuff when we get the other unit over there and he said yes. So we're gonna do that. Um, it's already over at the mill, obviously. When we get this over there before 3.30, then maybe another day, because it's under a shed, we can go over there and actually just re-sticker that unit before they stick it in the kiln. Worth all the time, no doubt. So are you ready to mill a timber frame yet? <laughs> easy, easy. I think like with anything, just comes down to practice, so I feel more confident. Yeah. I do feel that I could mill a timber. Yeah. I remember the gist of it. Ooh. Like raising the one end to get the yep. grain straight and yep. making sure that all your cuts are plumb. I think cutting a timber frame is kind of like your first child. You're never ready. I don't I'm not even a parent and I can tell you that. And no the second child, because you screwed up on the first, will be perfect. Oh yeah, the second child always gets a better deal. Your second timber frame will <laughs> always be better. And then the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, they start to get careless. <laughs> right? Start cutting corners. So child like two and three dialed in. <laughs> so four rows is 28 boards. We totally killed this entire stack. There were a couple of thin boards in there. I'm not sure why that board's on the bottom down there. There must be something wrong with it. A lot of times either the length is an issue or there's a big wow of Wayne or something like that that basically nixes that board for this use. So what we've got left is this pile. I can't even see you down there. It's getting really tall. <laughs> what the heck? Why? Why would you do that to me, board? You. I think this is garbage. to go how's it feel good yeah I just milled our entire loft, loft deck. floor on my own anytime I'm up there our bugger was up there we're all gonna be saying thanks mom all right five two go
Well, that's it guys. I think this project is on hold until all the lumber comes back from the sawmill. I think we did a really good job maximizing our materials. We have an entire pile of 27 foot lumber left over for another project. We have to get this over to the sawmill before the guys go home for the day. And then we got other things to do. I think we're gonna come back out here. We're gonna spray the sawmill down with compressed air because we don't know when we're gonna use it again. And then if we have daylight, we're gonna re-sticker some of this junk out here that we kind of just tossed to the side. And would you believe it? We got this done before London Fog 30.